Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's always the really fun part to start an episode when you've actually already been talking and we have this like terrible habit of never pressing record at the right moment. So I press it early these days. There you go. <laughs> Why don't you just like a quick introduction of who you are and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes. Okay. Yeah. So hi, my name is Tyler Pate. I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, all around creative, I like to say. I've been working in the industry for about 10 years now, anywhere from agency world to freelancing to back into the industry of movies and television network, and then still freelancing to bring more social media content. That's kind of where the generation is kind of going. So doing a lot more of that now from South Carolina, live in LA now. So big move there, but yeah, yeah just creative. Okay, there's so much to unpack there because I did yeah. some digging. Every time we have someone on, I do some digging. Okay. Not to like get any dirt, but just to like understand who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I find dirt, but not typically. So the first question I want to know is, did you always know that you wanted to move out to the West Coast coming from kind of farther on the other side? Like, did you have this dream of working with these huge agencies? Yeah, I well, growing up in South Carolina, it's... The cliche of small town vibe, especially where I grew up. And it was always in my head, New York, California, but California got me because of skateboarding and I love skateboarding. Okay. So cool. it wasn't a hard uh, sell. My son is six and we were recently in London and we, my husband was a pro BMX racer. So we found this like skate park. He's seen skate parks. He can't quite do them yet and can't quite like, he cannot do them. And so he was like, <laughs> can I just like run through it? And I was like, go for it, dude. Mm -hmm. And he was just running through the skate park. In my head, I was just saying, parkour, parkour, <laughs> like totally from the it. office. It was adorable. <laughs> but yeah, he's not quite there, but he does have a board and we just got him the knee pad. So nice. yeah, that's coming for us. Anyway, we're going to go on some tangents. It's fine. So I also was kind of small town vibes. And the minute I got to school, I was told New York, LA, mm -hmm. Boston, like any bigger city. And Boston, because I, you know, I'm from New York, that's like close by, but it's still mm -hmm. a big city. You did visual communications. Is that the same? Is that graphic design? I don't yeah, know what these yeah, that's, words are. <laughs> okay. it, I didn't even understand. It was one of those right? where, you know, I picked a school that was just in my budget and area that made most yeah. sense for me. And they had a visual communication department, which is graphic design is what it is. Um, so did you know, first of all, is that a BFA or is that, is there like a letters attached to that? Like mine's yeah. a bachelor of fine art. It is a BFA. Yeah. Okay. So did you feel like, cause I think we graduated similar ish times and I felt like I had to get a degree to do anything. Do you feel like going back now, do you feel like you definitely need to get a degree or do you feel like you probably would have been okay without it? It was huge. I actually, I think it was my junior or senior year of college. I went back and forth of potentially just leaving and going to another school or do I, you know, kind of jump ship and try to see what I could do on my own. But there's so many nuances to that where I know it made me and led me to where I am. I, you know, even yeah. coming from a smaller school or a smaller area. I think for me, it helped to get a little more hungry and, and I had to do more and we had less. So I had to be resourceful. That is such yeah. a good way of saying it because when I went back as an art director, I got to work with students mm -hmm. and they were so hungry. That is yeah. such a good way of describing it because they, I would give them a project that like I didn't want to work on and they yeah. would be like, you got it boss. And I'd be like, <laughs> you're so great. Thank you. And then they'd come back with like three options that I never would have yeah. thought of. And I was like, their ability to just try things and like know that they might be bad at them. Mm -hmm. And in the moment think like, wow, I'm really good at this because they're just learning for the first time. They're just testing it out. They have this, I don't know, like naivety, I guess, of what for the sure. world looks like. That is so awesome. Yeah. And I really want to grasp more of that because when you get to be like an expert in your mm -hmm. craft, then you try and do something new. You're like, I actually suck at this and nobody yeah. can see it. And I, I miss that. So it's good to hear your perspective. And I also think that the connections you make in college, like the, oh, this person went to my mm -hmm. college and they work at this big agency. There's just something about that that really yeah. sticks. At least for me, I have people from my university that are all over and it's been really cool to see where they end up, but I don't think it's necessary. You could do it without it, but I, I do think I had a great experience too. 
so okay so that was my first thing is like what was your degree did you know you want to go into graphic design did you know you want to be like in the la scene but you ended up there and then you really like made your rounds can you talk a little bit about the like 80 places that you've had your foot in the door at your <laughs> resume is insane you know what's so funny about that is i've never felt like that and again that's life it just kind of happens and before you realize it it's like oh i do have experience because I, I yeah. again, getting back to the early days of coming from a smaller town and all that, that always felt like in my head is it's like a setback. I've got to work more. I got to get further out there. And I've, I've got to create those opportunities because I didn't really have that many just knocking because there was, well, who is yeah. this guy? So that led me to working at an agency for about five years in Charleston, South Carolina, actually got me really understanding how the industry works and how the logo design and illustrations and website design and all that stuff really plays hand in hand to any business brand company. And during that time, I kind of went head over heels with social media and understanding it's like, oh, this is a fun tool to share everything and I can curate it. And it doesn't have to be about the client at that point, And it doesn't have to be about the job. It's just my for fun. And that's kind of what led to a lot of that because I started curating it, wanting to be better and I'll do what I did previously. And that started getting a little bit of attention. And then when I went freelance, that was when most of that happened. And the word of mouth was, was a lot, lot bigger at that point. So you did that all while being in a smaller town? Well, I guess Charleston's mm -hmm. not really that small of a town, is it? Charleston's bigger than where I'm from, but yeah. Right, yeah, but it was... it's not a major city. <laughs> no, I no, think it's, it's important to like recognize I am not mm -hmm. a city girl, okay? Yeah. It's not for me, it's overstimulating. <laughs> yeah. I, my dad's from New York City, from Brooklyn. And I really appreciate it. And I did, I had that mentality. Mm. And I went to Burlington, Vermont, which is not a big city, but it's got like yeah. a very like walkable. And I did it, worked at an agency there. And mm. I think it's important to say that like, you can get that the vibe of a big agency, or you can like have your hand in a lot of things at a small agency. And that if you want to live in a big city, because you find that fulfilling, you should. Yeah. But I do think that especially now, like you're saying with social media, you could make this work anywhere, especially anywhere. now with remote positions. Mm -hmm. And so we were just talking with someone who was like, I really want to go work for a big agency. And we were yeah. like, cool, what appeals to you about a big agency? And they were like, well, I want to have my hand in everything. And I was like, <laughs> mm, flip it and reverse it. Okay. Yeah. You're actually going to want to work at a small agency where you can wear a lot of hats, because mm -hmm. if that's what you're looking for is like a bunch of different things. If you're in a big agency, you could potentially be doing the same thing mm -hmm. over and over, which yeah. is very fulfilling to some people. So I think it comes down to like finding this combination of what type of environment you want to live in and then figuring out what type of job you want to have in there because, you know, it, people work it is. all over. It, and you know what too, though, is it's never truly what you think, right? You can't <laughs> plan it. You can't plan it perfectly as much as I would love to do that. It's just things no, you I would find love out. That. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to just plan every minute yeah, and like and leave just like a little it. room yeah. for spontaneity yeah just mm -hmm. control every aspect of my life it's funny you said like you weren't sure if you were qualified and when people like remind mm -hmm. you of the things you've done katie and i are writing a book right now and several times during the process and we're really at the early stages mm -hmm. we've been like oh okay all right we could do this yeah. we don't have to give all the money back and it's so funny <laughs> because it's true like i think at the end of the year when we because we're recording this it's almost mm -hmm. the new year when we go through and we like look at the things that we've done and we set new goals, like we often forget to make that list of the highlights. Yeah. And I always try and be conscious of the things that like, oh, wow, this year I actually did this, this and this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that feels really good. And we're so bad at doing that. Yeah. And I try and do like a bucket list for the next year, but also being conscious of the things I did. And when you're like deep in the trenches of some shit, mm -hmm. it's really hard to be like, but look at all the great things I did. And so, you know, it, if you haven't done that for this year yet, go through and make the like highlight reel of the things you've done. It's important. And it's just a reminder. I, I think that's what's really good about these kind of conversations and honestly, the design community, because I slip into the darkness of not in bad way, but darkness of literally this room just getting darker because it's night outside and I've been working yeah. and clicking for hours. And I love that. But at the same time, whenever you do get to step away and you realize that, you know, deadlines are always going to be there. New projects, if you keep at it, will always come. And 
that's the cycle. And if you don't really peek up over that, you're never going to see what you're doing or you're never going to see where maybe that goal has changed. Cause that's yeah. changed for me quite a bit in my career where it's, I have a, a vague idea of where I want to go with this, but that gets more focused the further I go and that close out the noise. That is such a great reminder. I feel like mm -hmm. we can really lose sight of our vision mm -hmm. pretty quickly. And also then we get so hard on ourselves when we're ready yeah. for change. And when it gets dark at four o'clock in the afternoon, oh, it worse. sucks even worse. <laughs> but I feel like, okay, so maybe people say this to you all the time, but from the outside, mm -hmm. it looks like you do it all. It looks like you're one of those people who's like, I work at this company and then on the nights and weekends, I do this and then I do this. So can you like dissect that a little bit? Maybe yeah. talk about what things you actually are balancing because I bet mm -hmm. there's a lot of, I bet there's some unpacking we could do there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot and I really don't touch on it much, but I do have a full-time job. I work with Nickelodeon and I, that's <laughs> so the dream. Cool. That was a dream job for sure. I mean, that was a fun one to have them knock on the door and say, yeah, we were recommended your work. What? And I was wow. shocked. Yeah. Wow. So, I like uh, already have 20 questions just from that one <laughs> statement, but I'm writing them down. Uh, so if you see me look off into the distance, I'm writing yeah, down all you, you do questions. your thing. So I work on the consumer products team specifically. So that is another one of those little things where you don't really know where that path's going to lead you, but that's a graphic designer dream. I would have never pursued specifically that. And it's one of those that touches everything that gets shipped out, everything that gets made in big retailers to small retailers. That's what you make. And I get to create a lot of cool style guides and different assets that get used for these big IPs, which I grew up on, huge Nickelodeon fan. So I do yeah, that. Join the for, club. <laughs> I do that for a full-time job, but there's also all the fun things that really fills the void of, for instance, Working at a big company, and this gets back to what we were saying earlier, the bigger company, you think you can do more and be a part of something. Well, there's stipulations on when you can even talk and share about those things, right. like many NDAs that we have projects for. Well, that entire job is pretty much that. So a lot of what I work on, I won't see for another year or two years. So yeah. it's kind of one of those strange places where working on really cool stuff, can't really talk about it. Seeing a lot of cool yeah. stuff, but... I'll just say it's cool. <laughs> yeah, Katie and I actually license a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. And so we could probably talk about it because it's like a greeting card and it's not yeah. Nickelodeon. But I'll get the product like eight to 12 months later. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even remember making this. Because yeah. in order for it to get sold, I have to make the work and then it has to get sold. And then mm. the product has to get made. And then I see it in stores. And honestly, by that time, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I don't even like this art anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But it's still cool. It's still really mm -hmm. cool to like walk into a Target or another store and be like, I had my hand in that. That's mm -hmm. cool. But yeah, it's a really long process. And I'm curious if any of the work that you do, like that we're seeing on your Instagram, does any of that ever cross over to the work that you're doing at Nickelodeon? I've never posted anything from work on my account. What about yeah. <laughs> internally? Can you bring some of the skills like your illustration oh, or your like? It's a thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. about creating content? Like, it seems like you have mm -hmm. this knack for creating content. Are you able to bring that to your job as well? Like, do you feel like it's a nice crossover between yeah. what you're doing or do you feel like it's two completely separate jobs that you have? You know, what's funny, I think doing the social media and, and developing that stuff on my own with the side. And that's ultimately, I think what got me that position that is now the ultimate source for finding freelancers, finding agencies, finding all these things, because I've curated it so much. So if you go through my feed, it's just art and design. It's very curated. And it's just like a great place to just pick and choose and reach out and communicate just like this with other people. And that's been probably the biggest help for it. But again, we work in social media a lot. You know, what you're doing too is the same where uh, it's something that we can bring back into our jobs or whatever collaborations like, hey, this worked for me here. Let's see if we can do it for this. Yeah, and that, that's that actually happens a lot. That, but not in the social media sense is how mm -hmm. Katie got her kind of wings to go mm -hmm. freelance is that she really wanted to do hand lettering freelance. And so she yeah. started, you know, perfecting her craft and she brought it to her job and was like, can I yeah. 
would it be okay if I hand lettered this? And they were like, yeah, girl, go mm-hmm. for it. And then she, you know, built up her craft like that. But neither Katie nor I, outside of like good type, have mm-hmm. ever been great or all that excited about posting on social media. I've actually taken a <laughs> hiatus for the past two months on my personal feed. Mm-hmm. I am on TikTok though, and I find it very enjoyable. I feel like I say this <laughs> literally every episode. I'm like TikTok spokesperson. But I think just because we grew up like watching mm-hmm. Instagram, we were some of the first people on it. And so the pressure was like built in. And yeah. so I think this maybe this younger generation doesn't feel that pressure, but I have always felt that pressure to like post more. And so finally, I yeah. just said, I actually think this is toxic for me. I'm going to get off. And it's been two months. I feel great. But there's always that drive of like, it is a great place to connect with other people. It is a great mm-hmm. place to share your work and book new jobs. And that's not something I'm the booking new jobs is not something I'm focusing on right now because we work at Good Type full time and we have a team at Good Type. And so it is a great place to do all those things. And I think having like personal boundaries with either how much screen time you're going to have or like taking some pressure off, like I'm only going to post once a week. How do you, do you have any boundaries or do you just like not feel the pressure and you just find it really fun? Oh man, I I wish there was no pressure. It is, (laughs) it is for sure. What you're saying, I don't think it's a surprise that probably everyone feels that to a degree at at some point. Because again, what you said, you know, we're probably getting into it around the same time, seeing it happen in social media in particular, just thinking of it as, uh, oh, it's, I remember coffee and bagel type pictures. And that's all it was. (laughs) And then (laughs) and sunsets. Yeah. And I was like, well, my grandma liked it or my mom liked that picture. That's cool. But (laughs) when that pivot happened, I vividly remember it. And it was, I think I'm going to make a private account just for that. And I'm going to turn this into strictly design because I think that's, it's a portfolio. I've started realizing it's like, that's, this is just a portfolio. People that follow me here. SEO. Yeah. People that follow me here would never see my portfolio on my web browser, right? but yet they see it updated every day here. And I notice that more and more and, but that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you manage making this passion fueled work or are you mostly posting things that you've done in collaboration with clients and just documenting the process because you have a full-time job Mm -hmm. which is demanding and then you find this time to not only do freelance work but also to keep up with content creation how do you manage that so that is the key that i always tell anyone who wants to take it serious is like find a niche and i think i found my niche my niche is designers creatives people typically in school coming out of school but that creative community. Because what I find from that and what's enjoyable is not only do I get to share my stories and share my processes because I wish I had that (laughs) earlier. Mm -hmm. I always want to try to pass that along as much as I can, but also it's the way to experiment. That's my experimental lab. That's me. I'm working weekends late at night, but it's for fun. But it is a mixture of brands that I am doing collaborations with and then also for fun. But that mixture I leave ambiguous. I think you're so passionate that you're just exploring, but you're being mm-hmm. really strategic about it. Like, yeah, and yeah, critical too. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? Critical too, because oh. I put a lot of pressure on, it's like, all right, you need to finish this. When there's no deadlines, it's like, you need to finish this. You and know you what, knew, there you, is you something, know. Yeah. there's something real good about finishing a piece, but I think there's also a really great ability to be like, I actually, I don't even want to finish it. I have a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Like I will read a book that I'm like, this isn't even good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm oh, like, yeah, I just well, have to finish it. Well, why finish it? Right. That's a great point that yeah. I don't know why finish it is. I think it's something you said this earlier. It's like, there's always going to be more deadlines. There's always going to be mm-hmm. more work. There's always going to be a, the next project. And there is something, and I don't know if this is like a creative right brain, left brain type of thing, but mm-hmm. like, I'm never going to get to the bottom of my to-do list. I'm going to get to the bottom yeah. of like, the, I'm going to get to the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to have to move things over to, to tomorrow or I'm going to cross a bunch of stuff off. But like, there's no end. I no. hate the phrase, but like, you got to enjoy the process. But it's true. <laughs> like, if you're not having fun doing it, it's not worth yeah. doing it. And Katie and I say this about running your own business, because if you're not enjoying running your own business, then you just shouldn't be doing it. It's not worth it for the like nights and weekends that you lose if you're not having fun doing it. So yeah. that's step one. Make sure you have fun. And you're obviously still having fun. Otherwise, I think you would probably <laughs> just like lean on your full-time job and pick yeah. up knitting or something. Yeah. No, it, 
That is the thing. And you know, the hardest, and I kind of have a question for you too, because you know, yeah. as we kind of get further and further in this creative universe or career that we have, it's the things that get more focused is like what I was saying earlier. It's really time. Time is the ultimate thing because that list constantly grows. I'm constantly jotting down ideas, sketches that I'm excited to get to. And I like to have that carrot at the end of the stream mm -hmm. there so that I could just, if I'm grueling Go through work, it's like, ah, I'm thinking about that. It's like, if I can get over yeah. there, if I could finish this to get there, then it could be fun. But that time management, I think is the ultimate, hopefully one day to master, probably will never master, but yeah, just try it's to get as close. Moving target. It's a moving mm -hmm. target. I actually love time management, which is funny yeah. because I am, I'm pretty ADHD and I don't mm -hmm. mean like TikTok diagnosed me with ADHD. I mean, yeah. like when I was, I think 12 started taking medication. I don't know if I was 12, mm -hmm. 13, something like that. Started taking medication, learning the tools and resources that would help me. And my dad taught me this thing that has stuck with me forever. And I've probably said it 18 times on here. So, you know, apologies, but. I make an A, a B, and a C list. So my A list mm. is all the things I'm working on like today. Like every day mm -hmm. I have a to-do list that I'm working on. Maybe it's for the week, maybe it's for the day. My B list is like the things that are coming up or maybe they're the big picture. Like on yeah. my list today, literally it's right here. I need to stop at CVS and pick up some gift cards because I got to give it to the bus driver. Got to do that. That's like a thing that I'm going to get done today. I'm going to cross it off. But then on my B list might be to think about this other project we're doing you know, yeah. whatever, a big picture, a revamp for one of our courses, adding some content to it. And then on my C list is like, oh, I've got this idea to paint on X, Y, and Z, and mm -hmm. then record it and blah, 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 blah. And then when I get to, oh, another good one is like, I really want to make good type socks. I know that's so weird. No, that's the coolest just, thing. Right? I love yeah. socks. And so that's like on our C list. And mm -hmm. so I can't even think about it today. Like there is no mental capacity yeah. to think about that. There's no timeline. There's no urgency. It's not important. It's not mm -hmm. urgent. It's just something that sounds cool. So every like couple weeks or every quarter or whatever, we'll look at the C list and be like, is there anything on the C list that we can move up to the B list? I and love then that. Sometimes I'll be like, that thing that I put on the C list is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, I will say like, there's no point. Like, for example, mm -hmm. I had design a font yeah. on my list for so long. And then I made one and then I was like, design more fonts on my C list. And then finally I was like, why? <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to help me grow my client list. I don't want to become yeah. a font designer. I like literally just wanted to do it to do it. And I did it once and it was really hard. And I'm going to leave it to the professionals. And so that like time prioritization, time hacking, mm -hmm. productivity thing has always really helped me. And we use Notion and we keep track yeah. of everything, a combination of other tools. But I think it's going to be a constant thing that requires attention because at mm -hmm. some point that tool isn't going to work for us or we're going to need to add a tool or it's yeah. not going to have the capacity to do something. And so I think time management is just going to be like a constant act of being aware and evaluating and figuring yeah, out what yeah. works. And it's just something we like don't account for on my schedule is never like, look at productivity methods. You know, it's just mm -hmm. something that's like always turning in the back. How are you tracking all of this? Yeah. Well, I am an avid note taker and okay. I have Pen tons of these little, yeah, I love the tangible side of me writing too. it down and scratching it off that classic mm. for me or being Nothing able to better. visualize this is chaotic, but visualizes a bunch of pieces of paper printed out and on my desk. And then I could just mm -hmm. prioritize it like that. I usually start like that. And then I'll bring it to my calendar, do it the old yeah. fashioned way like that too. But it is a lot of prioritization. And I think a lot of like the, maybe the artist side of me, it's like, oh, this sounds like a cool, thing. like the socks, right? I couldn't yeah. tell you how many projects where it is yeah. not advised at all if I had to look at myself and be like, to do that. You don't need to explore creating sculpts and molds so that you can make a 3D candle holder. <laughs> and the, it's like, I've really dove into these things. And wow. it's fun because I'm curious to how to do it. And I love this idea of, I did all of that. And yeah. I like that ownership for some of those just and I think I've really narrowed it down to, you know, how some people have hobbies. If it was knitting, I would say that, but it's a weird gray area because my hobby is what I do. I have a hard yeah. time with that because I would illustrate for fun. I would yeah. 
create some sort of different medium for fun. I think that that's actually a little bit different from your day job, which is mm-hmm. probably why it is so exciting and fulfilling because your day job, it sounded like, you know, brand guidelines and products. And so it, it is different in a sense, but it's like under the same umbrella. It is. And I think I've gotten to a place where I really want my hobby Part of me is like craving going back to that as my mm. hobby because right mm-hmm. now my hobbies are other things. But I also really had for so long craved doing something that was different than my job. Yeah. And I did used to crochet and I made really great hats. I actually, You're we're going to just go off on, I a, it. on a quick You need a path. hat collection behind you. I want to see you these products. <laughs> I sold them. I was a little baby entrepreneur in high school. I sold them and I would make them on the bus to swim meets. Mm-hmm. And I was also a snowboard instructor. So it was like, that's awesome. I could wear my hats to my snowboarding stuff. And then Mm -hmm. it was great. And I recently last winter bought some really cool yarn (laughs) and I was like, I'm going to pick it back up. Like I was not good at this. I just want to be clear. Like I knew one stitch. Apparently there's lots of them. I knew one stitch and I could make a hat. That's (laughs) it. That's all I ever made. They weren't that good, but I was like, I'm going to get back into it. And it's been sitting in my office in the closet it's right over there yeah for so long and i'm like i think part of it is i have young kids so not Mm -hmm. that they're the excuse but like they're more important to me right now than picking up crocheting but i do think there's something really cool and sometimes hard to do as an artist to like pick up a new skill that you're Mm -hmm. not good at and it's really interesting my husband actually loves watching youtube videos of like people making shit that he is never gonna make he's like this person is making a tunnel underneath their house and it's so (laughs) interesting how they're using that i'm like i no i don't even care or like this person's restoring this old wooden boat and i'm like why don't Mm. you go fix our boat he's like this is just so interesting i'm like it's not it's not interesting to me but it's cool to watch people who are just interested in learning things Mm. And then it's really cool when people make things and especially when they're really bad at it, but they're so mm-hmm. excited. And I really crave having that again. And I think that comes from, like you said, experimenting and trying mm-hmm. new styles, but also knowing where you can say, I don't need to go as far as making the 3D yeah. model. I could just make the packaging or I could mm-hmm. just like take a candle making class. <laughs> so I guess what would your hobbies be? Like what things have you ever said to yourself? Like I would try that. That could be fun. Yeah. I've never made time for it. All right. So I've been always on this pursuit ever since I think college. The first pursuit was why do I like these things and creativity and design? And why am I a designer? Why am I trying to do this? Right. So that's kind of unearthing this longer but shorter story of, oh, it was skateboarding for me. Skateboarding was the first time of seeing graphics, understanding that, oh, somebody made that or seeing the bearings packaging and being like, I don't want to throw this away. Why don't I want to throw this away? And I need this urge to, I was scrapbooking stickers, all right? I would not use my skateboard stickers because I didn't want to lose them. Absolutely if I, not. If I, I used had a them, sticker book. gone. That's what it I was. Had a, I had a sticker book where you would take the like sticker. Like baseball cards. Yeah, and I would yeah. put them in the sticker book so that yep. they would be safe forever. And, and if I people just wanted to trade them. with me, mm-hmm. no, I'm not trading <laughs> no. these stickers. These are priceless. Exactly. So I did that. And then I realized looking through the things that I would kind of keep and collect. And I had this real fascination with miniatures for whatever reason, Mm. but like almost like the dioramas and things that you would see for speaking of Christmas, if we want to get on the time of day it is, but you know, those little villages that you would see sometimes Mm -hmm. some people would have them out at their house. I would always find those cool. And I was like, oh, we we need, need to make one of these. So speaking to what you're saying, your husband watching those videos, I watch people making those miniatures on YouTube I love <laughs> and they'll make these dioramas of like an ocean scene and they're playing with resins and they're painting yeah. and airbrushing. And that's what I want to retire doing. That's my that's old so man cool. hobby. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. My husband is a tinkerer, so he would be, mm-hmm. he, he's like, I'll just make our table. I'm like, okay, well, it's going to take you four years and we need somewhere to sit. I love you, Greg. You're great. But it's funny you mentioned the miniatures because Mm -hmm. I forgot about this because it's not in plain sight right now. But I had a dollhouse growing up at my Mm -hmm. grandparents' house and they made it. It was like one of those kits where like they buy the parts and they put it together. It was very cool. Mm -hmm. Humongous. Like it didn't fit in the trunk of my car. Humongous. Yeah. Or it did, but like with no room to spare. So I took it and I was like, 
I had just had a baby girl and I was like, I am going to remake this and it's going to be her present for her <laughs> first birthday. And now she's turning four. And wow. I have painted like one layer mm -hmm. and I have redone the floors, which in four years have completely warped. But I, turns out, hate doing things that are that small <laughs> and with that many little pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like graphic design because it's like a computer is all I need. Mm -hmm. But I, I had the same thought as I was like, I'm fascinated by all these miniatures, the tiny little yeah. minuscule things with your hands, like really stresses me out. I like super glue something and then it's, it's <laughs> off kilter. But I am determined that one day I will be renovating the dollhouse into my dream house. Yeah. She probably won't appreciate it. And she's already broken every single vintage furniture piece that oh. my grandparents had for it. But it's fine. <laughs> she's going to get plastic. She'll find a way to break that too. But it's amazing what people can do with their creativity, like mm -hmm. how it manifests into products, how it manifests into projects. It's so inspiring. And I do when I'm on social media, I will go down a rabbit hole of something that I'm never going to do, mm -hmm. like building some random thing. I don't know. Well, it's enjoyable. Well, you know, something that gives me validation or, or at least reassurance of whenever I do go on those tangents. And even with the model example I was talking about, it's only a matter of time before you find a way to fold that back into what you do for a living. Totally. That's what I found. Love that. So, you know, me going on a tangent on making molds and 3D candles and things like that. It's well, now I know the process of candle making so I can directly collaborate with another fellow artist. And we can create something really cool. Yeah. And I know the details for it, or at least baseline details of how to do it. That's always been something. And the step away from a computer, it's always enjoyable for me because that's yeah. usually my reset mode to where it's like, all right, let's see what we yeah. can get back to exacto blading and spray painting. Yeah. That's Oof. always fun. I don't know if I need to go back to exacto blading, but yeah, we some, that's got a, some scars. a past time. <laughs> yeah, I got some scars. Plenty. Um, yeah, we... When you said that, when you were like, well, mm -hmm. once I learn about it, that's immediately where my head went is that once you learn about a skill, like maybe you've taken a mm -hmm. pottery class and you're like, I absolutely love this. It was really fun. But maybe you find someone who's an expert at pottery and you're like, how yeah. can I bring my illustrations to your pottery? Yeah. And just being able to do your work in a new way and tying it back in, I think is mm -hmm. really beautiful. Okay. I have two topics that I really want to touch on. Okay. Something you said earlier, which I made a note of, was that Nickelodeon came to you and they were like, hey, mm -hmm. you're cool. Come work with us. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> so I think part of this, like a takeaway would be like the value of having a personal brand. Mm -hmm. That is, I would say, probably not the norm that a company as humongous as Nickelodeon or really like any company would come knocking down your door. Can we talk about that a little bit? Like, what do you think caused them to do that? What got their attention? And has that happened before where companies are finding you instead of you knocking on their door? Well, for that situation in particular, I think there's a lot of things that probably took an effect because whenever I was working my agency mm -hmm. job, I left that company after five years. It was one of those where, all right, five years, I said I would be here for two, three, and then blink of an eye, it's five. And then when I left, I realized that I'm want to pursue that bigger agency or bigger brand. And I thought I was ready and I kept applying, applying. And then through that applying, I was just doing more freelance. And then that became what I was doing full time for, for about three years, full time freelancing. And that's a roller coaster, as you would know, right? It's just, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how some things kind of come knocking actually. So with that get, came this idea of like constantly working, putting more stuff out there creating more of this sense of whatever you're doing for yourself, fold it back into the brand. So that right. mentality kind of became a thing. It's like, if you're going to illustrate, illustrate something that's under, for me, the creative pain brand. So right. it could be used for either content visually, digitally, or right. poster. Right. Stickers. Just don't just make something to make something, but you're being really strategic. You're like, how can yeah. I use this as a way to promote myself? Makes so, sense. So with all the illustrations that I would do for fun, whether it would be weird or made no sense to what I did last, but I was exploring, I would document it, record, video screen it, flip it into a, a time lapse, flip it into a process video. And I was constantly folding it back on itself. And I think that created more content for me to push, which brands started noticing that. And I think now in the past five, six years, brands noticed that, oh, we probably should collaborate with people who are on these platforms. And that gives us more leverage to get our stuff out there too. And 
And I think that helped because then there's these brands coming, wanting an outlet. It's like, oh, we would like to see you do an illustration of our stuff like you did with this one. And that, I think, got at least my work to a point where I had met one person who previously worked at Nickelodeon, but I had never worked with them right. professionally or anything. And then nothing ever happened with collaborating when he was there. And then he left. And that was essentially it. Never got that chance. And I was hoping, I was like, want to work with Nickelodeon. I think that'd be so cool. And that, that was the end of it for months, I think almost a year. And then all of a sudden, someone reached out and they're like, we saw your work and want to see if you'd want this position for an art director. Wow. And I was like, oh, that sounds exciting. I want to hear more. And I kept saying in my head, it's not a thing until it's a thing. And I didn't want to get my hopes up. I didn't want to say, oh, I got this. Like, I just didn't understand. Like, Why me? Like, what, where is this coming from? So I just kept saying that. And I just went through that interview process as I would any process. And then all of a sudden it worked. And I was like, all right, well, I guess this is a thing. We got this. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting it. I was freelancing. And every, I think, six months, I would do my reassess with me with freelancing. I was like, how are we doing? What's coming down the pipeline? You know, do I still want to do this? And every six months, I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I get one or two big projects where I was like, this is why I love doing this. And then with the Nickelodeon thing approaching, it's like, well, this is something I didn't expect, but I got to give it a shot. This is, you know, could be a once in a lifetime, who knows? So I took it on and that's been kind of the story that when I look back, a lot of those moments kind of happen. And I think it's just because of putting my work out there and having that opportunity present itself and just being ready when that opportunity yeah. says hi. I think everything you did was so intentional. Mm -hmm. Like you put your work out there with intention and that makes a huge difference. And you were passionate about it. You had fun exploring yeah. it. So you were partially doing it just because it was you were passionate about it, but also mm -hmm. because you knew where it could take you. Yeah, it's definitely rare for that to just land in your inbox, but also pretty fantastic. Do you feel like, do you miss the world of freelance now that you're, yeah, I know you're still doing it, but mm -hmm. the flexibility, or do you feel like, you know, this is the season for not having that be your main kind of thing. And you like the structure and you appreciate the structure of a, you know, more traditional nine to five, or do you feel like just, you're just getting the both, best of both worlds? It's definitely been the best of both worlds. Sorry. That sun's coming up in the window. Yeah. I'm slowly <laughs> getting brighter. I had to open my curtains. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best of both worlds in, in the way of I get to cherry pick those collaborations now. Because right. when I was full-time freelance, you really have to assess the business, you know, budgets, what's yeah. your income, what's your, you, you, we know this stuff, right? It's things of what is that overhead? And I think with taking this position, I've gotten more freedom in that sense. And it's given me more, honestly, it feels like I'm learning something every day in, in a company yeah. this big. And I think that's yeah. something that I can, again, fold back on what I do and what I've always done. And that's exciting. I've only worked with brands as being a freelancer or being a, a partnership or something like that, but always on the outside. But now I'm able to be on the inside and allocate those collaborations for other people. So I'm able to see what it's like to do that from the inside out. And that's only going to help. For any other thing I do down the road, because I love your energy towards it. It's it's, it's awesome. exciting. I think it's yeah. It's just, I love that. I would have never guessed ever that would be the case, but it is. I mean, there's a lot of positive things from it. Pros and cons to everything you do. Of I think course. freelance pros and cons. Yeah, but I think one of the I great like things it. about having these conversations has been hearing people who are not burnt out mm -hmm. <laughs> and who are like excited <laughs> to do what they do. And obviously that comes in phases. Like you could be it burnt does. out tomorrow and then the next day be fine. But it's mm -hmm. really great to hear people who are passionate about what they're doing. So I love that. And thanks for sharing more of that. Something that we do is, you know, Nickelodeon didn't knock on our door. I'd love it if they did. It doesn't even make sense though. Like <laughs> we're teaching stuff, you know, not sharing a lot of our illustration these days, but obviously if that was something we were interested in, we would take strategic mm -hmm. steps towards that. But some of the things that we do with our licensing portfolios is that we do outreach emails. And when I graduated from college, what I did was I sent a series of four postcards to the mm -hmm. agencies I wanted to work with. And they did not have a return address. They did the first three did not have a return address. They were just like weird handset type letterpress, little mini postcards. Yeah. And they were about llamas. Cause that's like always been my nickname. 
And then the <laughs> last one was like about how I really needed a job and like information about who I was. And like mm -hmm. every single one of them became a conversation starter, whether it was like an article they That's wrote awesome. or a tweet or just mm -hmm. an email that was like, you're funny. I'll keep you on my radar. And I feel like social media is partially the modern day of that, but it's really mm -hmm. when you get the like connection to someone, it's like responding to the comment. It's Mm -hmm. saying hi to someone in the dms going to the events yes, yes, um, yes. that it really really changes the game mm -hmm. and yeah it's pretty great it's it, pretty fun when you can like take your creativity and use it as a way for connection i mean ultimately that's the best part of it i would say for me is is understanding that those moments of where you want to be but also the people that you can meet is looking up to you too and it's like oh i get to change what that process could be for them. Meaning, you know, from, I still see it a lot these days where you could reach out constantly to people and you never get any sort of feedback or even a high, but you can change that by always responding or at least trying to be more active and helping anyone. If there's something you could help with, because, you know, for, I think going back to the beginning of our conversation of coming from that small town, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. Right. And I always want to remember that. And, and even my professors were huge on instilling, stay humble, spread the word of what you're doing. And, and that was what I want to really live by because it's hard. It could be hard. And if you're not enjoying it, you're going to drag yourself through the mud and it's, it's not going to oh, be yeah. fun. It's not going to be fun. And now I can easily see how you're being that kind of hub for someone else, that connection or that just like friendly face where someone mm -hmm. is feeling like they don't have those opportunities. So I really appreciate that. I wrote down two other things. Yeah. Oh, I meant to ask you this at the beginning. What you got? The creative pain. You were like, so, yeah. you hear that? And you're like, that's like grungy, hardcore. That uh, is yeah. not your personality. Tell me what that stands for. I love that because it's either that or the polar opposite, which is what it actually, I try to instill on it is the creative pain is embracing the pain. So yeah. all of us as creatives probably have this feeling of whether it's burnout or mental, mental block or creative block, whatever that is, we all go through it. And I came to this realization years back where I hate the gatekeeping system, meaning I yeah. can't understand how you do this and I'll never know. And you'll never tell me. And I realized like, that if you don't tell them, somebody else is going to. <laughs> yeah. Or you know what really just blew the doors off was the fact that your process and by no disregard, it's not magic. It's just no. time. And that's yeah. nothing to be ashamed of or afraid of someone right. stealing. And that's why like, I what can they steal? How to use Adobe Illustrator? Like I, Dude, that's common I don't know. knowledge. Let's go find a tutorial. You, yeah, you know, it is <laughs> it's weird how people really feel like it's yes. they have ownership over it. Mm-hmm. I for, almost yeah. yeah, no, you're finished. It was like the ownership of it is really if you want to do this, I would encourage you to spend the nine hours that I spent. If not, do it less, because I want to know how you did it less. Because yeah. a lot of these things take so long. That's no exactly what it. Katie and I, yeah, that's what mm -hmm. Katie and I are writing our book about is like finding your style. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that comes with time, but a lot of it is like making bad work mm -hmm. and not forgetting that we are all made up of a ton of different influences. And so if yes. I did your exact process, my work is still not going to look the same as yours unless mm -hmm. I'm deliberately copying you. And if I'm deliberately yeah. copying you, I hope it's for like a educational, obviously I'm not going to condone plagiarism or copycats, but no, but you know, I when you're it. starting out, you're going to copy your teachers. You're going to copy what you see so that you understand how it works. You're going to reverse engineer it. And so mm -hmm. there's really no point in holding any of this information hostage. Like, I, I think so. What benefit do we have? And yeah. even with pricing, like if I share how much I charge for something or how much I made, Hopefully that helps you charge appropriately instead of like yeah. me feeling like, well, they're going to get more than me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, next time I work with them, I'm going to charge more too then. <laughs> well, I think a lot of times I hate to assume this, but I, I assume that people think that that magic sauce that we're saying or whatever we're creating is so special that it's, we're losing focus of what is special. It's not the finished product. Usually it's, the relationship, it's your process, it's your humor, it's these other things that no one will ever steal that because I am a maj paj of millions of things, so are you and everyone else. It's just a weird algorithm. And 
you know, what I find funny and I inject in my illustrations, I mean, if you were able to copy it, I mean, I'd probably get a fun laugh out of it because it's probably right. funny. I don't see anything of harm. I mean, deliberately don't steal a logo. You know what I mean? That's where right. it gets kind of dicey, but I'm you just kinda, thinking of illustrations. Yeah. Yeah. You take pieces of what you like about everything and you put it together in like a, mm -hmm. a you stew, which sounds yeah, you weird, style. but you know, maybe yeah. it wouldn't taste great, but it really it makes up what you are. Like you don't have ownership yeah. over a specific style because it's just yours. Yeah. It's different from someone else's. It's made up of all these other things. And so yeah, it is exactly. quite a journey and we've definitely felt some creative pain. So I, I yeah, totally get so, what you're doing there. So that's totally it. You know, it's just embrace the, the process, embrace that trials and tribulations. And hopefully yeah. you trust that process. You're going to break through it to a point where you understand why you still do it still. Yeah. Because you love you that. Have that. You love spark. that moment. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I'm only going to do two rapid fire questions because I know okay. we got to wrap up. First one. Raster or vector? Vector. Mm, do you work I, in raster a lot? I feel like you do a lot. Not a lot. Not a okay. lot, but I do jump back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator, but I love the challenge of Illustrator, meaning mm -hmm. let's see if we can make this look as close to an image as we can. Yeah. And then I can scale it. <laughs> yeah. And then your computer lights on fire, but it's fine. Oh, it's, it's burning, <laughs> steaming, marshmallows. Cook an egg on it. <laughs> okay. This one, I'm going to give you an option. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do a would you rather, they're weird, or just a silly question? Uh, let's go to the weird ones. Why not? Okay. Would you rather use curls, the type curls? Are mm -hmm. you familiar? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or use it for the rest of your life or lose your thumb? I know. These are, <laughs> these are the hard hitting questions that people come to. The oh, it, oh, I can make curls look good. I That's can't. what I said. Yeah. I've like, Without a thumb, it, I'm screwed. <laughs> you just convert to outlines and you change that thing. You just yep. remove the curls. That's yep. what I said. I think, <laughs> I think we got to change that one. Someone did ask us our favorite font the other day. And I was like, I go with something like you really utilitarian because I could change it to mm. anything, you know, mm -hmm. it'd be easier. Anyway. Okay. Just a quick shout out. Where can people find you and follow along with your creative journey? I'm very active on social media. So Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I think that's all of them, but they're all at the creative pain. So awesome. all consistent there. But yeah, just anyone wants to say anything, please reach out. I'm awesome. pretty good at responding. Great. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All good things. <laughs>